Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to the Model Railway News. I'm here with all of the latest news, updates and progress from our wonderful hobby over the month of April. And like literally every other month so far this year, there is a lot to see, so settle down, relax and I hope you enjoy it. The first thing comes from Rapido, who have made a very surprising announcement. So earlier this year, their popular APT e-train packs returned to the shops, but now joining them are these two new APT e-variants, and unlike the previous release in the prototypical BR Grey and Blue, these two are in fictional liveries, more specifically the BR Intercity Blue and Grey, and also the Intercity Swallow livery. Now how cool do those look? They are absolutely wonderful, in fact it's hard to believe that they didn't exist in real life because they look so right. But they are obviously incredibly expensive as you can see, yet yeah, quite a lot of money to pay. And it is quite interesting because of course usually people are willing to spend that kind of money if a train pack is super realistic, let's say. But obviously that's not the case this time, so it will be really interesting to see how these go down. And I'm kind of hoping they will go down well, actually, because I love fictional liveries, right? I love nice looking locomotives, and I do think sometimes fictional liveries, things that aren't quite that prototypical, are a good way of producing really good looking locos. So I'm personally a big fan of this idea, and I hope to see it more with different models in the future. Rapido have also announced that their LNER dynamometer car is returning to model shops. And because they're no longer retailer exclusive, they're actually available at a lower price than they were originally. I think to start with, they cost £125 to buy. Now from the retailers, or at least some of them, you can get them for £118.96. So I don't know about you, but I'm definitely quite tempted by that. And of course, quite a special vehicle, because it would have been one of these vehicles that recorded Mallard's famous 126 miles per hour run. So I've never tried one of these models, but it now looks like I might get a chance to do so. So that is fantastic news. As you've probably noticed, Dapol are absolutely on fire this year, and it seems as though they're not overly interested in putting themselves out because they've made yet another new announcement. We're back to double O gauge this time, and it is the Hawthorne Leslie 040 saddle tank. This is another really cute little tank engine from right around the turn of the 20th century and at the moment for this initial release Dapol have announced nine different versions of the model. And this model is set to feature multiple separately fitted parts, a next generation 18 pin decoder socket, die cast wheels and a die cast chassis and also a five pole skew wound motor. And of course, Dapol's latest steam locos have been really, really decent, which makes the price for this new tank engine really quite impressive. So Dapol's RRP for this is just £117, which in itself sounds quite reasonable, but of course, they're even cheaper at the retailers. So at Hatton's, for instance, £99.45. That's around £15 cheaper than the Hornby Peckets now. And of course, they're not brand new locos anymore. So really excited for this. I do love the little tank engine. They're almost always decent as well, aren't they, in double O gauge, so can't wait to see these. And if you're interested in picking one up, I will include a link to the pre-orders in the description for you. The next update comes from Acura Scale. Now, as far as I know, their highly anticipated Class 37 diesel is still due for release in quarter three of 2022. But as of the start of April, we actually haven't seen any decorated samples of these. Well, that has finally changed because Acura Scale have just showed off their first example, which is the Network Rail one in the very interesting yellow livery. And this is just a painted engineering sample. So of course, it's not necessarily the final product but it definitely gives a good sense of what the final models will look like. And seeing all of those detail parts fitted and also painted really brings the model to life in my opinion. So can't wait to see the rest of the Class 37s. And if you're interested in pre-ordering one, I will pop some links down in the description for you. The next update comes from KR Models who have shared a little bit of the progress on a couple of their models. The first one is the first engineering prototype sample for their upcoming Bullied Leader locomotive, plus a few interesting decoration guides which give you a good idea of what the final liveries ought to look like. In the article on their website they say that the chassis is going to be die cast and because one of these model actually exists now they've been able to test it out and hold it and such and they say that it's very very weighty and that that does translate into decent traction. 
The model also features full LED lighting, etched grills, and a heavy duty centrally mounted motor with dual flywheels. The price for this Loco starts at £185, that's for the DCC ready version, and pre-orders are still being taken from the KR Models website, so if you're interested, do check that out. They've also shared a few images of their first Clayton DHP1 engineering sample, and I think these show just what a cute little diesel this Clayton is. At the time of filming, the order book is still open for this Loco, so again, check out their website if you'd like to secure one. They're set to feature much the same setup as the Bullied, including the heavy die-cast chassis, centrally mounted motor, dual flywheels, and they've also got separately fitted wire handrails and pipes, and also sprung buffers and etched grills. And these are a little bit cheaper than the Bullied at £160. So again, check them out if you're interested. I really do like the look of this Loco. Next up, there's been a very interesting development at Hattons with the introduction of what they're calling the Hattons Marketplace. The best way I can think of to describe this is it's like eBay, but for model railways. Now they are just getting started with this service at the moment, so there's not an awful lot listed on there, but essentially it is an eBay-like bidding system for second-hand model railway products. So a little bit like eBay, this allows you to name your price for whatever you want to buy and then place a bid. And of course, if nobody outbids you, then you get the item for your price or less. So it's a pretty decent way to get a bargain. Now looking on there at the moment, it is mainly relatively old or perhaps low demand models. You might even say undesirable models, but hopefully as the platform picks up a bit of momentum, then some higher profile models might get listed on there. But I've had a go, I've won a few auctions and I'm looking forward to receiving them. So check it out if that's something you're interested in. The final update for today comes from Hornby, who revealed an early sample for their new P2 locomotive. And looking at the photos, it seems to have been fitted out with many of its details. Now their engine shed blog confirmed that the model will have a die cast running plate and chassis. So that's pretty good news. Hornby don't always do that on their locos and I think they suffer for it. And they've also said that the popular firebox flicker effect is coming back for this loco as well. Looking at the photos, you can tell already that this is going to be a much more refined model than the previous Hornby Railroad and Hornby Railways versions of this loco. And so it should, because the ROP is now sitting at £254.49 for this loco, or around £208 at the retailers. But still, these photos are good evidence that this is at least a high-spec loco, and hopefully it will be a high-quality model as well when it finally gets released. For now though, that is just about it for the Model Railway news for this month. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if I have missed anything that you think deserved a mention, please do comment it down below and I will consider it for next month. For now though, have a great month, happy modelling, and I will see you again very soon for some more videos. Alright, cheers everybody.